technology is society made durable and that is our quote of the day that's from bruno latour he was a french anthropologist and philosopher and when he's talking about society he's talking about a collective of things mm -hmm. so um, made durable obviously when we interact more with technology we have more to give we have more innovations um you know in our society it what makes do you think? it makes us stronger and mm -hmm. uh, it is supposed to make us even live longer and make things easier for us but i'd rather have a fragile society <laughs> i'd rather have a vulnerable society that knows that we need each other and technology doesn't have to define us but as we use technology um, we should also n uh, not uh, lose sight of the uh, virtues that make us human so while technology aids us to be better we should also know that it is just helping us mm -hmm. to be better uh, people better humans, better uh, brothers and sisters yeah. that depend on each other for happiness, for love, for sustenance and everything. Amazing. Rightly said. <laughs> All right, let's move over to our papers today. We'll be taking some global stories, making headlines in our national dailies. And joining us to review the papers is Dr. Omoshola Deji. He's a political analyst. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. Thanks for having All right. So we'll be starting with The Guardian today. And in fact, this headline, you know, made its way across all the papers today. And it says businesses grown as labor grounds, economic activities. Um, that is on The Guardian. On the punch, it says minimum wage. Federal government offers over 60,000 naira labor may end strike. On the punch, it says um, AGF tackles labor as NAS failed to stop strike. So, um, yeah. On the Daily Trust, it says minimum wage labor strike grounds activities nationwide. And then on the Vanguard, it says labor shuts Nigeria as wage talks resume today. So we have this going across all of the papers. Um, but let's stay on the Guardian, which says businesses grown as labor grounds economic activities. Now, we know that the strike started um, yesterday. Well, the labor unions have had, um, you know, meetings with the federal government. And I think they've kind of reached a little, I don't know if I can call it an agreement, but somewhat a consensus. I want to get your take on this, on the strike, um, you know, labor's demands to the federal government and the federal government's response to all of this. You see, labor demand, you know, to my mind, is very legitimate. If you look at the reality of the country today, if the economic situation is anything to go by, you would agree with me that life has become unbearable for majority of Nigerian citizens. In the sense that if you go to the market and you, you know, hear the price of things, you know, if you see, um, uh, this, well, what do they call it? Pepe of 500 naira now, you mm. know? It, 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 I, I don't, think I don't even think there's Pepe of 500 <laughs> naira anymore. And I go to the market a lot, if I'm being honest. Now, imagine that, mm. you know? So, if you buy two pieces of rodo for 500 naira, if the loaf of bread that you are buying for 500 naira is now one five. The reality is, I believe any government that is reasonable should have done anything before now. And you, you, you see, I don't like when we operate a country whereby for you to get something that is not your right, you have to fight. For you to get something that is your right, you have to fight. Mm. For you to get something that is that essentially belongs to you, you have to fight. Everything is a fight, fight, fight. But if you want to renew your passport today, you have to, you know, you have to struggle, you have to fight to get to work, you have to fight. Why? What kind of country do we operate? You know? So I think labor um, demand and labor strike also is absolutely legitimate because labor is the voice of reason that is most needed now. It is the saving grace that Nigerians have because right now, Things have gone to what an unbearable for majority of citizens. You see, people red right and center, you know, for many bodies that think, oh, maybe you know, they, they feel you are better than them. So nobody has you know, um, peace of mind. And coming from a government that announced removal of subsidy over a year ago, if you have the interest of your citizen at heart, if you are truly a government in the true definition of a government, which is to bring Stockholm to the citizenry. 
over a year is enough time for you to have implemented policies and to have changed the minimum wage in such a way that it will reflect the reality of the economy. But unfortunately, so what is actual said, what is labor has not gone on strike. So that means that you will just leave the people to be talking. And all we hear is endure, endure, endure. Excuse me, Mr. Don't tell us to endure. Are you enduring? You know, we see your kids all over the place, the kind of watch they wear, the kind of luxury life they live, you know. You yourself, you know, you, you and your vice president have spent over eight billion on travel recently. Are you enduring? You want to send billions of dollars to, to, to build or renovate the vice president's um, residence. Are you enduring? So don't come and give me that endurance thing. The, the National Assembly spent humongous amounts to buy cars. He is the problem of members of the National Assembly, which one of them don't have a car. So they can't sacrifice their car to use, to do government work at their own personal sacrifice. Okay, I don't want to buy a car. Which of the senators don't have fleet of cars? Is he a poor Yaliba? Is he a lady Moko? Is he a lady Zume? Mention any one of them that car is the problem of life or our life. No. So we live in a country whereby government is selfish and greedy. To pay citizens just a living wage for them to live fine is a problem. And this thing has led to increase in crime. You know, marriages are being destroyed. A lot of things are happening. But government doesn't seem to control. They point on the right direction. Be that as it may, I must also to point out that labor is actually making um, um, a bit of mistake. If you are going to protest, there are limitations to your right to protest. You are going to stop essential services that can lead to loss of life, goods and property. I don't think that is um, accurate on the part of labor. You know, going to stop the national grid, for me, I think, um, is a bit off the hook. Because you can't, you know, say because you want to start and go and touch the national grid and, you know, some other essential yeah. services. But then again, can you blame labor? That is one of the best ways you can get government to act. If you have a government that tries in impunity, you two, you need to go the high road of impunity to force the government to action. If God is labor, Nigerian Labor Congress behaves the way the labor in foreign land behaves, they won't tell it off. They won't. So, they, they know that when they shut the national grid, stop people from flying. That is when government is busy. That doesn't mean it is right. But if it is the approach that will make government busy, then labor has no choice than to make the approach that will make government to this But I don't think something the national grid is selling um, um, is a good idea, as much as the strike is legitimate. Well, um, I mean, with them shutting down the national grid, obviously, is because they've tried their best, in fact, for several months to get the um, attention of the federal government and to let them know that they are being serious. And, you know, having the National Assembly talk about the anthem is almost like, you know, you don't take us seriously because if you can prioritize the national anthem, and that's one of, um, you know, the headlines here, it says um, NLC tackles federal government National Assembly for prioritizing national anthem bill over workers' welfare. So we can have conversations about, you know, the anthem but then when it comes to the welfare of nigerians we're not looking at that do you feel like the the government might just have some form of misplaced priority when you know thinking about the nigerian people and what they need absolutely absolutely i was um, i was on um of a platform i can't remember the exact platform it is and we are reviewing the one year um, of the president and one of the things that i mentioned is Okay, um, I've so far admired the political temperament of, of the president. It's not like when he used to be the political strata of the, you know, of the APC, you know, um, although, although can be people were screaming his name. When he wasn't president, he would have been screaming his name. Baba Sope, you know, Daddy said, Baba said, Godfather said, all those things. That one has been reduced. But at the same time, what I noticed in him is the level of his, you know, um, with profound respect to him is arrogance, what I can call, you know, um, sophisticated arrogance, in the sense that 
Um, Labour went um, on, I think, warning strike some time ago in the life of this administration. Yeah. And the president was in, was in Lagos then. And I heard his comments live on TV where he was saying, you know, uh, you know um, people have been fighting yeah. for people before now. Not only in Nigeria, it is not only Labour that have a um, right to fight for people and all that, you know. And the, 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 the arrogance that it was speaking is it, it, it so, it so, you know, um, um, it's so distasteful. Recently in Lagos as well, when it was um, commissioning the, um, a project, this um, Lagos to Calabar project, he also said, today can be his plan to Oga, don't you have advice <laughs> Don't you know the reality of the country? Your government, by statistics, is even worse than the Bari government that people are saying is bad. You have not even finished a project. Talking about the emphasizing the misplaced priorities that I spoke about. You have not even finished a project. You just commissioned the flag off. You are already saying it's your branding day. Come on. You know, and if you doubt me whether I'm wrong, it is the same man that went to us that said that much they have been not so. You know, I can do on and on and on and on. So when you are not for the arrogant. You will naturally have this place priority. You know, you will be naturally disconnected from the reality of the people. When you are surrounded by psychopaths, political and media boys, you will be naturally disconnected from the reality of people. And when you are surrounded by people that will not tell you the truth, either because they want to make you feel cool or because they know you yourself don't want to hear the truth. If they know you are ready to they won't tell you the truth. So I think, you know, if I can use them, um, um a case of football, you know, if there is a free kick at the end of the 18 yard ball, there will be players in front of the keeper trying to guide the goal, um, the goal post. If the keeper is not experienced, if he is not bad, that goalkeeper, then those defenders would have lost his sight. I think that is what is happening um, with the president right now. I think his handler, his aim, People in the speaking cabinet are blocking his sight from the reality. And that is one of the things that killed the Jonathan administration because I remember when Jonathan was celebrating an anniversary of his, anniversary, uh, of his administration at one time, you know, when, when he lost a book or something like that, you know, he was busy praising himself while he noticed that his, his administration is the best. And I laugh. So I think the, the, the president himself is also walking into that direction and he needs. To be careful, he needs to be very careful. People are not finding it easy, especially for a government that suffered legitimate city crisis. If you look at the result of his election and, and the result of his opposition, if you match them together, what that tells us is simple people that don't want to be in power are more than people that want to be in power. In other words, if you stop the, the vote of our people, will be perhaps another presidential candidate, they are so my own vote. By a wide margin. So that means that why are these people vote out in the 2023 election went to carry their vote? People that naturally don't want you to be president. You know, and more than people that want you to be president. For a government that suffered that kind of, you know, what we can call a legitimacy crisis, you are supposed to come into power and see how you can make life convenient for, for the citizens. You didn't increase the minimum wage, you remove first of all, you remove. Um, Subsidy on electricity. You increase tax, and yet you didn't increase the weight. So we will blame labor for fighting. I think there is high displacement of priority on the part of the government, like never before. They tell it. Yeah. Um, much as I try, I will never forget the uh, political Alleluia voice. <laughs> okay. Rumi was also laughing when, when you said that political Alleluia voice. But be that as it may, uh, the, the, the concern of a lot of people is the feasibility of, of the demands of labor. And they're saying it may not be implementable. I don't know what you think. Do you think Nigeria can pay what labor is demanding? Well, sincerely, um, that's a fine question. Um, labor demand is really not implementable in the true sense of it, because um, the minimum wage we, um, will be passed into law, and if it becomes a law, that means that if you are um, a cook, you have to pay that cook four hundred and something thousand that labor is demanding for. That means if you are the driver, you have to pay that driver four hundred and something thousand. So it doesn't only apply to the federal government or federal workers. 
It also applies to the state and it also applies to the local government and even private enterprise. Okay. So in the, in, in the reality of that, even to exclude the federal government, which is not realizable for the federal government as we have funded and funded thousands, is not realistic. But I think in the reality of today, you know, with the rate of inflation and everything and, you know, and the, the, the economic situation, I think the minimum wage sincerely should not be less than the 150,000 naira in the true sense of it. If the, if the um, economy um, is actually um, anything to go by, because if you look at it, the price of things um, doubled under the body administration, now it has people, it's not for people. You know, so if you, that says that you should be able to move the minimum wage up to about 150,000. But the say government will come and pay 850,000, I don't think that is um, realistic. And things will not have gotten worse up to this level. If government, if, just imagine labor not, not, you know, going into any negotiation talk, any crisis, you know, let's say three months after the TV was involved, government is not the kind and just say, okay, we pay the minimum wage of 50,000. Just imagine, you know, how people will face the government. But we have the government that is very, like other people, you know. You see, one thing politicians don't know. I think before I'm turning it into any political office, politicians should be made to kind of like sit down for a four one on one court, you know, policy on one, you know, which would involve um, state and citizen, you know, and the symbolic relationship between the state and the citizen. Because most of these politicians, it is sad that, you see, the state, the patrimony of the state, belongs to everybody, you know. That means that the right to a are, uh, the right that a Fabio has to the treasury, you also have it. I have it. The right that you know, are, I have it, you know, um, um, and everybody has it. The only thing is, is that he has presented himself to, for election, and we have put it for him to represent us. So, you know, representing us doesn't mean it is now your ancestral, you know, ancestral right or ancestral property or something. No, you are holding the communal patrimony in trust for the people. So, but unfortunately in Nigeria, politics has become a, a, you know, a situation whereby some people use it to seek power and now perpetuate the resources and power of the state to the benefit of themselves and their family, you know, forgetting about the people that even put them in power. That can only happen in a flawed democracy. When you know you don't need the people to actually win an election in the true sense of it. When you know you can manipulate the, you know, um, the, the um, electoral process, you can use talk, you can use comprom compromise security agencies to read your way into power. This is the kind of case we have. Performance will be on the low. Government will, will be even further about performance at all. Because if performance is anything to go by, you know, some of the whole, you know, and if I put some, the, the performance of this administration in every sector and raise it by having, you know, I will call this government more than 15 to 10. That's because I don't want to call it five. You know, <laughs> I want to just be, you know, <laughs> it, I will put it 15 days because the welfare of the people, which is the paramount, the quality of life and property. If anybody has asked you to get this, like I used to tell my friend, the rule of the game in Nigeria is no matter what happens, make sure they don't. Eat. Hmm. If they kill you, you can't get it. Because people will just forget you. You know, they will cry just a little while before you know it. You have forgotten. What has happened to Bona Ijeo, to the general of the presentation? What has happened to Mobad, that young boy that was killed this entry? As the case not died down, as the upper autopsy report is being made, it is made with you, with due respect to his family that did not die this day, you realistic with ourselves. So, corporate has failed in all ramifications. In all ramifications that, you know, well, the president is saying. The president is saying, I'm working to improve quality of life. Mm. That's what President Tinubu is saying, and that is on the punch. He's saying, I'm working to improve the quality of life, even though when you flip over to the vanguard, um, you know, the leader of the NLC says government reforms shouldn't push Nigerians into poverty. And now we've seen a lot of those reforms, you know, in the past couple of months, especially with the president's, um, you know, one year in office. So we've seen fuel subsidy being gone. We've seen electricity tariff you know gets 
increased for Bani A customers. You've seen, you know, for everybody, things, not all everybody. A lot of things, you know, a lot of reforms that the government has put, you know, hasn't really worked out. It's been a little bit counterproductive, if we can say that. But still, you know, the president has said, tighten your belts. Um, you are, we have to make some sacrifices. And now he's assuring you that it's working to improve the quality of life do you think our quality of life will be improved anytime soon <laughs> okay let's put a timeline to it so do you think in the next one year we'll be singing a different song we can't sing any different song because in nigeria this has only been but if my knowledge you know is about nigeria is anything to go back i was born in this country i grew up in this country you know um every administration is only worse than the last administration Look at the quality of the education that people were trying and you know, we are screaming that we never had this bad. Not knowing that Kinobu is going to be shaken for Mark. And unfortunately, Kinobu himself will not lay a good foundation. When another administration comes in, it may even be worse than the Kinobu um, administration. So, you see, the, the effort of government in terms of making life convenient for the people. You see, the effort may eventually yield good fruit. In all honesty, you know, the um, floating of the Naira, the removal of property, it is eventually yield good fruit. But when the good comes, what may happen in Nigeria? We know ourselves. When that good thing comes, the problem is if we get to the market, what? Corruption. Corruption. Government is saying, yo, when the benefits of their endurance come, it will eventually get to the people. Because there are people wishing that out of this Tinubu administration, they want to buy out in the end. They want to buy out in the end. They want to live, you know, in the London metropolis. Permit me to, to say this. Death. This administration they will, will favor me and my family. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, That's what they were saying. Say. This administration will favor me and it's my family. No, no, it's a favor, you know, the those that say so in the area of corruption, maybe you are able to see government money. Mm. But the <laughs> truth is, we all will try the same road, isn't it? Insecurity knows no admirer. That is mm. the truth. Everybody is at risk, you know. So, um, the, the administration may favor you if, you know, you have some. Leverage or you are able to see government money and you have access to, to um, police and military. But the truth is, if police and military is guiding you as a political figure, if it favors you, with that same police guide all your family, we need guide all your extended family. So, more besides telling one that reason only for itself. And that's why I said this time the memorial that Nigerian politicians are not there yet. You know, what do I mean by that? If you are a politician and you are able to rise, to the level of um, governor, president, minister, commissioner, and when you wake up in the morning, all you think about your, you know, all you think about is how to profit yourself and your family, you know, how to steal more money. Then you are not there yet, you know. You are not, you know, at that level, at that nationalistic level. You are just not there yet, you know. You are like a baby in adult position. You know, that's the best way I can describe it. Because real politicians, real statesmen, when they wake up, when they sleep, when they eat, they are busy occupied with how to make life convenient for the citizen. But if all your life, what you are thinking about is how to invest, it, how to steal, you've told it, you are thinking of how to steal more, you've told more, you see what's more. If that able to pay for power and resources, if that is you, then that means that you are just not there yet. And that can only happen in a society that has, you know, small institutions, disoriented citizens and all. And in all in all honesty, Nigeria deserves it better. At least we've been opportune to stay in other plans. You can't perform some of these nonsense you perform with other citizens. I'll give you an example. There's a country in Asia that introduced six percent tax, they call it GST government. Service tax. That means that it is the price of everything has to increase by six percent, and that six percent goes to the government. So that means if you buy five hundred naira, the tax card they will give you for something. You know that the, the, the remaining amount automatically goes to the government. The ruling party in that particular country in Asia was so very strong. Do you want to hear the truth? That party as strong as it is lost the next election. Because why? That 6% alone was unbearable for the citizens. So, 
government shouldn't be about filthy the citizen. Government shouldn't be about making life unbearable for the citizen. Government exists to create stockholm, to make life convenient for the citizen, to create a kind of balance in such a way that you are from the rich home, you can afford to go to school. I am from the poor home. You know, government have made sure there's a value for me to realize my potential if I'm intelligent and greener in such a way that I can go to school. So, in the true sense of it, we don't, you know, with profound respect to the Nigerian government, we don't have a government in the true sense of it. What we only have is an administration. We have a group of people, you know, that are in charge of the Nigerian state, you know, and um, running it administratively, you know, and in terms of the um, um, immigration, custom, police. Mm. But the true essence of governance, in terms of representing the people, providing stockholm for the people, yeah. that is absolutely missing because I have never imagined in my life that the day we come in this country, that within just few months, the price of things we double and we triple. I've never imagined it in my life. Right. That the bread that you buy for 500 now today, if you travel abroad just to you know, spend a few months and you come back, you say that same bread is mm -hmm. on five. And the people are still receiving the same salary. I've never imagined that governors, governors are going to be It's quite, it's quite, it's quite, it's quite unfortunate. Get to work to this level. So, labor is right. And I say labor doesn't compromise. That mm. is the thing. Because all this one that we are hearing that, you know, and um, Nigeria and the other Nigeria. Well, we, we, we hope that the government, you know. The that the journey of the making is absolutely constant because the military guys themselves don't they go to the market. And their wife not complete. I mean, we're all facing it together. We're all facing it together. And um, I mean, if they have more money, obviously they can afford more. So we just hope that they understand that they are there for the people. And if the president or the federal government is saying they are working to um, improve our lives, we hope that that's true. And it's not just, you know, some that's statement, that's empty statement that they're saying. Anyways, this is where we have to wrap it up on this segment. We want to thank, thank you so much, Dr. Omashala, for coming. It was lovely reviewing the papers with you. Thank you. Okay, we'll be speaking with Dr. Omoshala Deji. He's a political analyst and we'll just be taking global stories making headlines in our national dailies. We'll go on a short break and when we return, we'll be looking at our hot topic, which talks about the minimum wage, the NLC and TUC um, agreement with the federal government. Please stay with us. <laughs> 